Good afternoon and welcome to Senior Focus. My name is Mary Prenny and I'm Director of Elder Affairs for the Town of North Reading. We're here today with Kathy Leonard, who's a licensed social worker and presently caregiver support coordinator at Mystic Valley Elder Services. She also has had the role at Mystic Valley as a protective service caseworker, a respite program manager, and also recently is working at an elder abuse hotline at a local hospital. Kathy is joining us today to speak about being a family caregiver. She's presently in the middle of a six-week workshop here in North Reading with Jessica Parrow called The Savvy Caregiver. And we thought this would be the perfect opportunity to talk to her about the challenges of being a caregiver. I've had the privilege of working with Kathy for many years through the town's partnership with Mystic Valley Elder Services. So, Kathy, welcome. And how many years has it been? Thank you. 25. 25 years Ooh. at Mystic Valley Elder Services. I'm uh, I knew it was long. I didn't think it was that long. <laughs> Time goes by fast. It does. It does. So we are all caregivers, sometime during the day, either to someone or something. But we're here today to talk about the challenges of caregiving for someone who has to caregive 24-7. So Kathy, I want to ask, start out by saying, how would you describe that 24-7 caregiver? Well, I think that we have to first realize that a caregiver, is, we're talking about a family caregiver, someone who's in the home taking care of a loved one. A lot of times, 99% of the time, it's somebody with some type of Alzheimer's or dementia. For the sake of Mystic Valley, a caregiver is someone in our service area, North Reading also, that's age 60 and older, taking care of a loved one that's um, over, over 60 or has a diagnosis of Alzheimer's or dementia. So it could be a daughter who's 23, who's taking care of a mom, who's in her late 50s who has mm -hmm. um, Alzheimer's disease. So it can be a range of folks and we also help grandparents that are 55 and older that have guardianship or some type of legal custody of their grandchildren. And those grandchildren can be up to the age of 18 that we try to wow. assist. And then we also help folks that are taking care of children who are disabled. Um, so we do try to reach out to those folks. Um, it could be parents, it could be sisters, it could be um, some relative that's taking care of someone who um, has a disability. So we try to screen for all types of caregivers. Oh, that's wide spectrum. You cover a lot and yes. there's a lot of need out there to help these people because as you said there's a various amount of different people who need care. Correct. And everyone wants to keep their loved one home so that's what we're trying okay. to help them so do. So actually what is the role of a caregiver? Is there any special training one has to need? So I think that that's the biggest thing is that you fall into the role of caregiver mostly. It could be that maybe there's some reason why you become custody of your grandchildren. Mm -hmm. You didn't expect this full-time new parenting role but there you are. Or maybe it's your, your spouse that has a diagnosis of dementia and now you're doing bathing and dressing and clean. No one trained you for this. You mm -hmm. just tried yeah. to figure it out. Yeah. So that's the biggest thing is we try to help people because there is yeah. no, it's on the job training. Yeah. And there is no choice. And there is no choice. Yeah, yeah. that's true. But it sounds like it can be very stressful at times. Well, it can be stressful because first of all, sometimes people don't even know what's happening in the relationship, whether it's with a parent or whether it's with a spouse, maybe the spouse has lost their job because they're forgetting things and mm -hmm. things are going on. That could be the first indication there's something wrong yeah. because denial is most of our yes. best friends. So maybe someone is, re you know, cooked a recipe forever and now it's not coming out the same. You kind of dismiss it. You're like, oh, that's just, you know. Yeah. People will say that's just old age or that's, you know, yeah. bad day. And, and then maybe you realize they're going to the grocery store and they're buying the same things over and over again that they're not using them. But we're, our minds sometimes don't pay attention to it. Yeah. We're busy with our lives. We don't want to face it. No. So it can be stressful Absolutely. when all of a sudden you realize, oh, this something's not right here. And you have to take on all of it. And you have to face it. And you have to fix it. Right, so you have it's to bring difficult. somebody maybe for a diagnosis, and that's stressful because, you yeah. know, no one likes to hear sometimes yeah. those things that are, you know, are said if someone has dementia. They, mm -hmm. Very unpleasant to very, be heard. Yep, or sometimes people are doing things that you think they're doing on purpose, and you don't even realize that that's not on purpose, yeah. that they aren't, 
you know, sleeping all day long on purpose, or they're refusing to help with the dinner like they used to do, or they, they're not being lazy. Um, it's And not family dynamics are very complicated. So you don't know the relationship of the couple or of the grandmother with the granddaughter. Um, so it does take a while because everyone is different. So yes. it's usually the norm to some of us would be kind of crazy, but it's the norm for them. Right. It's difficult to uh, tell to, the difference. Exactly, and to weed it out, or someone's personality. Mm -hmm. Sometimes people are just very difficult, or because they might be covering, so they might be a little fresh when mm -hmm. you ask them a question. Yeah. And they're like, don't you know the answer? Why don't you find out the answer? And so that kind of, that's their way of covering, yep. Yep. because they don't know the answer, but you're thinking, oh, that's just my father, he's always fresh, yep. until something yeah, happens. Absolutely, I something had a family bigger. member, we would always ask, who is the President of the United States? Mm -hmm. And he would always go, well, that no good SOB. And it was like, well, that's an answer. <laughs> uh, you know, uh, the one with the good looking wife. Uh, but they couldn't come up with the name. But right. that was their personality. So you couldn't tell um, if they know or they didn't know. Exactly. That's a perfect example. Yeah, yeah. And then when you realize that things are starting to fall apart, yeah. that's when the yeah. caregiving can get very, very stressful. Yeah. yeah. Now, what are some of the negative experiences one goes through as a caregiver? Well, I think it can be just um, you're not taking care of yourself. So mm -hmm. you can have a lot of health problems because you're neglecting yourself. Um, and then somebody that may be, well, it's just sad anyway when you realize that, that, that somebody isn't like your partner anymore. I, at Mystic Valley, uh, run a support group for spouses. And so it's a lovely group that they can come together. But what you learn is that here you are, you may have been so fortunate to meet your soulmate. But then all of a sudden that person isn't, even in that same relationship with you anymore because they can't have a conversation. Yeah. They can't initiate an activity. So your best friend isn't your best friend anymore, really. Yeah. You know, and that's a huge loss. And now on top of that, maybe they did the bookkeeping. They did all the finances. Mm -hmm. They did all those things. And all of a sudden, there's bills that are not being paid. And you realize you're getting these shutoff notices. And you're like, what is going on? Now you're taking on writing the mm -hmm. checks. You never wrote the checks yeah. before. You have to figure all that out. So there's some stress on top of that. And um, it's just all those things, or maybe it's someone who never cooked. Maybe it's the husband, he didn't cook, the wife cooked. And he has to figure and fumble all through that, trying to, and doing the dishes and the laundry, and they never had to do it, and they had to learn, to learn how to do it. Yeah. That's very stressful. And I think sometimes, too, when you have a relationship that hasn't been your soulmate for life, might have been a little bit complicated and difficult the last few years. And now you're in a role of a caregiver, and so when you had difficulty in a relationship before and you're a forced caregiver, so that has to be extremely That's, stressful. So I would call those folks the reluctant caregiver, someone who is going to do the best they can. They're going to do it because that's who they want to be, but it's very difficult because that mm -hmm. person that they had that relationship that maybe was a little strained or yeah. difficult, um, or maybe was they didn't maybe they don't get appreciated. That's even more stress yes. for those folks. Yes. yes. Yeah. It is emotionally draining and both physically exhausting, especially some people who are not sleeping. Not sleeping. And then physically, if you're having to help somebody maybe shower, mm -hmm. you're doing all the other work. Your, your body can only take yeah. so much. Yeah. So it's physically exhausting. Yeah, so you have too. extra aches and pains every day. Yes. So how can we help people who are caregivers in us, you know, as Elder Services just, and Mystic Valley, and it's just really good human beings. How can we um, help people? I think the first thing really to do is to call Mystic Valley because you're going to speak to somebody and be able to, they can weed out what you might need help first with. Now, some people come to the caregiver support program first because it's very non-threatening. It's free, first of all, yep. and that's always free nice. Is good. And then you can hear about what your options are particular to your situation. So you may want to come and talk to me, um, a caregiver specialist, alone. Uh, you might want to come to Mystic Valley. You might want to meet um, at a, a Dunkin' Donuts that you know isn't busy. Maybe yeah. it would be the Council on yeah. Aging where there's going to be yeah. some privacy and kind of talk about what's going on so you don't hurt the person's feelings that you're caring for. Because yes. sometimes it's the tr a truth. You just still don't want to hurt their feelings by saying this is so hard on me. You don't want your mother yeah. to hear that it's a burden. Yeah. So you might talk to me first. I can figure out what's going on. You may not even know what are possibilities. Yeah. And then from there, I try to get invited 
to meet the loved one mm -hmm. because then I can help make a very specific plan. So we will work on what will work for each particular caregiver. For some caregivers, they can say, oh, I did have a meeting with somebody from Mystic Valley and she would love to come meet you. That's going to be welcomed yep. with open arms. Yeah. For other people, they may be oh. more suspicious and more, there's nothing wrong Which with me. Which presents another conflict. Correct. So then I may come up with another type of plan mm -hmm. so that I could meet their loved one. Mm -hmm. So each thing we do is based specific on their needs mm -hmm. and not to worry that we are thinking of the caregiver every step of the way, not to make their stress worse. Because I would think the, um, the loved one with the dementia right away sees someone come in and right away they're going to put me away, I'm not going to live here anymore, and they're going to tell stories about me that aren't true. So building up a relationship, relationship is huge. Huge. So as long as the caregiver has a relationship with me first, sometimes you can meet somebody mm -hmm. without saying, oh, I'm from Mystic Valley Elder Services and I'm right. here to, yeah. that might be too much. The yeah. caregiver program is wonderful that way because I might be able to do a social visit and get a lot of information with the caregiver who they trust without making them feel like someone right is going to take away their independence or you know, scare them in any way. And for the caregiver, support is huge. Huge. You know, whether you're talking to a friend who has gone through this or going through a support group, knowing you're not alone. And there's always a stigma. And you're no longer, you know, you're no longer Kathy. You're, you know, Kathy's daughter. Right. And yep. that, that changes who you are. So you have to keep that in perspective too. Yes, yep. And a lot of people do at least sometimes maybe by meeting Someone from Mystic Valley may say, all right, I'll try a support group once. And then if you, again, you go, you get something out of it, and you realize, wow, there's other people that are in my yeah. shoes. I'm not alone. Um, wow, that's really good advice they gave me. Yeah. And then they'll come back. And that does increase their support system. That's true. And it's just trying to find the right support group. Absolutely. Because you go from community to community, it differs. So uh, if you're in the right group, uh, you may want to go to another town and find a night, night, yes. another group, but um, right. they're and out there. And people change all the time. Correct. And so what I try to do is once I meet someone, offer, try to, I don't want to send them to 10 different groups. I don't want to give them a list. Yeah. I want to be able to say, you know, this one might work good for you because these are the hours. These are the, yeah. this is the group that, that kind of yeah. meets together, more sons, more daughters, more, like just try to help them figure out. Yeah. And some people go to more than one once yeah. they start. That's true. In one word you said were hours. It's very important. People... Just always, even though the group meets at Tuesdays at 2 o'clock, doesn't mean at home things are going well that you can pick up and leave at 2 o'clock. Right. So it's always good to know there's an opportunity to go somewhere else that's convenient. And not only that, that's the service piece too. So if I uh, meet somebody who, regardless, like maybe wants to go to support group but they can't leave their loved one alone, mm -hmm. try to work with them to figure out, okay, what would work um, to have somebody, maybe would it be a companion yep. that could stay with, for example, someone's mom? And then... And knowing, doing this work this long, knowing that a caregiver isn't going to be like, oh, yeah, just send anyone over. That's great. And I'll leave. Yeah. They're not going to no, it's do not that. that easy. So we have to walk baby okay. steps. And with this program, I'm so lucky that we can, you know, I hopefully will meet the loved one mm -hmm. at some point and then say, oh, you know, bring in an agency that will do the same thing. Handpick somebody. Yeah. And then maybe it would be at first it'll be like, Say I'm the you know the companion that's going to stay with mm. your, you and your mom, and I'm going to come first, and maybe we're going to have a social visit and have yes. some coffee, and yeah. and then mom is getting to know yeah. me, but I'm your friend, you know. It doesn't that's have very to important. And then all of a sudden, you're going to say, "Oh, I see the relationship that you've built up with my mom. I feel comfortable leaving you, and now I can go to yeah. my support yeah. group." So sometimes it goes very quickly, yeah. and sometimes it might take a few weeks. And relationships are very important. Yes. And you know, we all like, it's only human nature. We don't like everybody who comes through the room. Right. But it might take a few weeks, a few visits to gradually to get to know you and say, you know, she's really a nice person. I didn't realize that. Exactly. It's nice to have her around. Right. And we do send people who are trained so that they know, mm -hmm. you know, exactly, you know, how to approach somebody and try to get them involved in activities and things. So... You know, we are sending trained people, match them yeah, up. That's very you know. important because with dementia patients, they change from 
minute to minute. minute. They can, yes. So that's comforting to know that we have a train for us and with our um, loved one. Loved one. Right. Absolutely. Or the day programs, yep. which we love. But again, meeting a, a person that needs to go to maybe a day program to keep them active and keep their mind exercised mm -hmm. and those things, we want to make sure it's the right fit. You know, is yes. it the distance to get there? Is there transportation? Is it the right club for someone? Um, and how we get the person there too. It's not. It's not that easy. Oh, it's no, not. It you know. Not you're just. Easy. It's not like you're just going to pull up and drop yeah. them off because yeah. you're very protective. You love them. You're not going to just. And it's no different than sending your child off to you know a daycare program for the first time. You're going back to absolutely. work on Tuesday and you're dropping that kid off. It's the same heartache just, and worries. Exactly. Same yeah. worries. So you want to know that. It's a gift for your loved one, but also that's going to give peace of mind to you that they're safe, they're mm -hmm. having fun, um, all those yeah, things. Yeah, peace of mind yep. is the key word. Yep. Um, we talked about negative things, but there are a lot of uh, positive things about being able to stay home with a loved one and take care of them. Um, to me, it comes to mind just having time. Yes. Time is so important. And what else do you think is involved in a good thing about being a caregiver and being able to well, stay at home? Well, I do. I do think you're you're allowing the person that you love to stay at home mm -hmm. because most of the people want to be in their own home. So that's the first gift you're giving to someone. Secondly, you have time with a relationship with somebody. Um, someone once told me it's true, like that this moment is the only moment you have. Yes. So if we can support people and we can help them enjoy those moments mm -hmm. with the person they love, so it's not always so this is still going to be stressful, but that there are still moments that they can carve out where there's still yes. time, that there's still a spouse, that they're still a son or a daughter to their mother, whoever the relationship is um, with the person, their, their best friend, what, whoever yeah. it is, then what a gift we have given people. Absolutely. And so Absolutely. I, and you I don't want those regrets either. So you have to, I think, when you're in the moment of caregiving, be able to appreciate this is a good moment. That was a funny joke. You know, I heard it 20 times already, but, you know, it's still a funny joke. And but what we also do see a lot, I see the people that have done this for so long and they can't see any other way and that their world gets very small and they're doing a mm -hmm. great job with, let's say, a spouse. But they don't realize the toll it's taking on them. But maybe their kids notice. Their kids notice that their father is not paying attention to his health. He's not doing anything for himself and they worry about the dad. So then it's a little bit of a challenge to get in there to see, wow, this break does help you be a better caregiver, that it's recharging your battery mm -hmm. and so that it's, it's a yes. good thing. But it does take a little while because that relationship, like you say, has been going on that little yeah. dance for years and a lot of times a person doesn't want to upset their loved one by suggesting we come in. But most of the time, it's wonderful. It's, it's wonderful. And if you can get over that guilt, exactly. and you teach people you don't have to be guilty if you just want to go out to the movies with a friend, this is okay. It's good for you. It's, it's good, good for your loved one. one. Exactly. Yeah, that's yeah. important. Um, so what can we do? What type of help is available for people who are that really 24-7 caregiver? What are some of the sources? So I think, again, I think if you start at Mystic Valley and talk to an intake um, in, um, information specialist, mm -hmm. they can hear your story for the first time and then direct you to what yeah. direction. It could be a referral to the state home care program where maybe you could get a, a little bit of a, a price break on mm -hmm. a day program, but also maybe a caregiver specialist um, to be able to help you kind of figure out what support groups mm -hmm. are needed and things. It could be we are going to help you figure out, oh, your loved one's a veteran and we're gonna help you figure out how to access VA services because a lot of our veterans have never been evaluated. So that is key. You know, it's funny you say that because that's one of the things I always try to remember the first time someone calls and asks about a service. Are you a veteran? Uh, was your spouse a veteran? And even now, is your, you have a child who's active in the military. Yeah. So I always try to remember to ask that question probably right after call Mystic Valley Elder Services. That's <laughs> yep. the second question I always try to remember people to, to ask, ask people because there are services there through the Veterans Department. Correct. And then also to look, some people have paid for long-term care insurance, but they don't ever access it. Okay, well, let's, that's a question I ask yes. because then it's like you don't want it to, it, you know, never use it and you've paid so much money into it. Um, some people can be or might be eligible for Mass Health or the Frail Elder mm -hmm. Waiver. We help people yeah. kind of 
sort that out and kind of guide them into the best resource. It could be, you know, an elder law attorney so that they could make sure that they're all set or whatever is best for them. So we look at the financial picture too because we know it's, it's important. It's very important, you know, to be a safer rainy day, mm -hmm. but we don't want you to th just throw it all throw away. away. Be careful. How we help you build. Be okay. careful how to, to, to use that money wisely to keep their loved one home and then if they're eligible for other special programs then we're gonna you know send them in that direction also it's funny you talked about long-term care, care insurance it's very expensive but i met a woman years ago who worked at the telephone company and mm -hmm. for years she just paid this insurance she had no idea what it was took it out of a check that was it and it was clueless it just thought it was something you did and she ended up for like the past 20 years living in an assi upscale assisted living and she had no idea yeah. that way back when this was paying for it and what, you know, the advantage would be for it. Because she would never, if she didn't have that life insurance, she would no way, I mean, the, you know, long-term care fair. insurance, she would never be able to afford that. Right. So, I mean, it's, you know, look into it. You may have it and you have no idea yeah. what you've been paying into that exactly. uh, paycheck and every a, week. And now it might be the time to get it going and make yeah. more sense. And then we can help sort that out with the right yeah. financial people to look at your situation. So, um... There are education people can take on their own. Yes. I mean, I'm, uh, there's always the internet. You know, sometimes yeah. you don't read too much into the internet. There's good news and a lot of too much information right. out there. But there are different programs, programs for, for, them. for people. So I'm thinking the most, most of the education that I run into that is really needed is around dementia. So honestly, we do have that savvy caregiver mm -hmm. program that you can find really across the state at different times. We can help you find. We try to do them locally yep. a couple times a and that's year. That's a program that we're running, running now, right now. And hopefully, it's been very successful. successful. So it, maybe in a few months, we can then, uh, bring it up again. But exactly. So that's a six-week yep. course for two hours, and it's it's supportive education. Then also, too, we'll hook people up if we know the Alzheimer's Association mm -hmm. is doing trainings in the area, then we can let people know where they are, or connect people, or even invite them to speak at. Um, a different venue because yes. they will. Yeah. They're so good about that. Um, and there are always support groups. And, yes. Um, and then the, they have the um, the ones right now, the and I look, the memory cafes. Yes. That's a, see, my memory, the memory cafes. <laughs> <laughs> so they're yes. wonderful too because they're popping up yeah. all over yeah. the place. A place where you can take your loved one together to do an, an activity. Yes. And so you're meeting somebody, another caregiver, so it's it's very supportive, but it's an activity because it's hard sometimes. It's hard to have people to go out to dinner with anymore or maybe mm -hmm. um, to go to a play yeah. because your loved one can't sit that long. But it's nice yeah. to have something where there's a leader that's already figuring out activity. You're going to go and just participate and watch you know, yeah. your loved one enjoy and then be engaged. Now, they have an too. active group in Reading, yes. which, of course, North Reading residents, if you're listening, are more than welcome to come oh. call the North Reading Senior Center or call the Reading Senior Center. It's a wonderful group. They just started one, I believe, in Stoneham yeah. and a few in our Mystic Valley areas. Yes. Yeah. So they've been very promising. And, of course, we are also starting to work on our dementia-friendly cities yes. and communities, which would be just wonderful to uh, incorporate with all our, like you said, you can't go out to eat because you don't know how the, you know your loved one's going to react and with the dementia friendly communities you, you teach restaurants you may have some place in a restaurant where there's a quiet spot so you just say can we have the corner table uh, the waiters the waitresses are used to um, knowing how to ask questions give them the smaller menu not give them the menu with the 10 items not the 42 items exactly so we're trying to teach the rest of the community how to be dementia friendly also so yep. these are exciting times absolutely yep. yeah going forward because people don't have to feel like they're all alone in it and that's um, a big thing yeah being you don't want to feel isolated that's the key word you're there's so many people out there and don't be afraid to ask um you can always call Mystic Valley Elder Services, 781-324-7705. You can always call us, call us at the O'Leary Senior Center. That's 978-664-5600. Um, we know a lot of stuff, not as much stuff as Mystic Valley Elder Services, but we are in the referral business. So we can always help you hopefully walk through what's going on. Um, so, And if you have any questions about today's program, you're welcome to call us also. So is 
Anything else you want to add? I think that's good. Thank you. I can't you. believe it's been 25 years. <laughs> For me either. It went, it went by quickly. It goes by quickly. But you know, I'm so lucky to be invited to people's lives. Yes. And I feel like I've helped them. Yes. So, thank it's you. It's wonderful. I mean, the pay is not that great, but... Well. <laughs> <laughs> but you've been able to help a lot of people, people through yes. the years, so yes. thank you. And speaking of thank yous, I want to thank our revenues and the folks at the Congregational Church for giving us the space yes. to do this workshop. Thank you. And I want to thank Phil Healy and Norcam today for filming. So again, if you have any questions, you can always call us at the Senior Center, 978-664-5600, and we can refer you to where it needs to be referred to. Thank you.